Radio. I'm Brian Foster. We are here on our Sunday night program, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, all time zones in between, all time zones around the world. If you have any, as I, to tonight, I'm talking about Carl Jung. So, if, but if you have any questions on anything, put it in the comment section. I will read it and we can discuss it. I can go off topic if we need to. So, first, why are we here? We are here for Spiritism. Let me bring up the book that I would recommend for everyone to read, and that is Alan Kardec's The Spirits Book. Some people read this book, and it's like it's just your eyes open, and you can't get enough of it. Other people, it's somewhat, it's not the way they learn. So I have other books that that I have written. You can go to my uh, my site, nwspiritism.com. I have Spiritism 101. You can get it for 99 cents on Kindle. You can also go to my Facebook site, Spiritism and the Spirit World Around Us. In the file section, you can download that. It's a PDF. Download it for free. Or send me an email. Ask me for it. I'll send it to you uh, uh, via email and attachment. So it's all PDF form. should be safe. So the Spirits book, we're all brought to you by here. But now what I want to talk about tonight is Carl Jung. Carl Jung was not a spiritist, but he was spiritual. And I want to talk about how he w became spiritual, what he said, and how it intersects with spiritism. I just put a short video on my uh, YouTube and BitChute channels about uh, Sigmund Freud and how he talked about things in the past. It, for him, it was childhood, how they affect us in our adulthood. And the spirits, when, when you're when they wrote about him in the books, I think that you could read from uh, Chico Xavier and the Andre Luis series, is that, you know, he didn't go back far enough, right? It was our previous lives, lives that uh, affected that. So there's a lot of interesting things and in connections with spiritism. So also this is Kardec Radio. Please share, uh, share this live stream to other Facebook pages. Please go to my YouTube and BitChute channels. Please subscribe, hit the bell. Share that, comment on it, like it. The more people that you know that we can get to get used to spiritism, uh, the more we can use the YouTube and BitChute algorithms to promote spiritism and promote this education for people. You know, we're not here to tell you anything's bad going to happen to you if you don't believe in spiritism. That's all up to you. We're just putting information on the table and letting you pick it up. It's it really what I believe spiritism is best for is for each individual for their self knowledge for them to understand why things happen around the world, around to them, why events happen, why tragedies, why good things happen, and for them to understand it so they can see their life from the 10,000 foot level and it makes you a lot less stressed. And a lot of this is also what Carl Jung said. Now let's look at, <clears throat> let's talk about Carl Jung. Now, let me find this picture, I got here somewhere. Here we go. Here is Carl Jung. Very interesting person. And I and I became interested in, in him. I became interested in him and in his theories. And, and he also talked about racial memory in the 1970s. And I was very young in the 1970s. But why? Why was I interested in him? And why? Because I remember reading about his that, you know, we have this with this racial memory. We have this memory of past events and actually it's from ancestors or past lives or something like that. And in the 70s, I would read about accounts of young men who would trip on LSD. They paint themselves blue. They go out to the intersection and they would attack cars. And you say, well, you know, that's strange. It's no big deal. Well, it's not a strong signal if it only happened once, but I read multiple accounts that during LSD, those you know popular LSD years, and this was only in my little universe of Southern California. I thought, well, is there something to this? Is there something to this memory that were, you know, these Celts would dress up, you know, dress up as, you know, blue warriors and, and you know, this was kind of made popular by, you know, Mel Gibson, his story about, uh, you know, Wallace. So, I mean, this is what they would do. Of course, you know, in the ancient, more ancient times, they'd be completely naked and paint themselves blue. And, and that's really what happened. 
in those days. They, and of course, the Roman legions wiped them out. They had no armor. They were probably easy pickings, although they were very good warriors. So I thought, well, there might be something to what Carl Jung says. And I, I saw this, you know, it's like in, very interesting. So, oh, Dulce, well, thank you. Good to have you on. So, so that's how I got interested in Carl Jung. And then, then I started reading about Jung's research when I became interested in spiritism. I, I remembered back to that and I said, oh, okay. What did he really think? And what I have read is he believed that our main task is to discover and fulfill our deep innate potential. And he studied many religions and he came to the theory of individuation, which he believed is at the heart of all religions. In summary, what he meant is individuation is a journey to meet the self and at the same time to meet the divine. Isn't that very interesting? That's not far off from spiritism, right? Is we're supposed to improve ourselves, we're supposed to understand ourselves, we're analyze ourselves and to, to remove the primitive emotions, replace them with civilized, advanced emotions. You take, take away hate, anger, jealousy, and put it in love, fraternity, and charity. And Jung knew that our spiritual health is essential to our overall well-being. Now, there are more and more studies now that you hear that people, that people say that if you are a, you know, a spiritual person and you believe in a higher power of yourself, doesn't matter what religion, you are statistically healthier. You have less illnesses. You recover if you have illnesses faster. And of course, this all could, all pertains to this, you know, the, the spiritist doctrine. In which we talk about the paraspirit, which covers our body and is in, you know, interconnected with all of our cells, and that is in our four centers, which a lot of people you could call chakras, right? And when we have stress, those four centers, the messages and the the uh, taking care of our body by the paraspirit is impaired because we have stress. We're, we're, and what, what is stress? Stress is when we don't listen to our conscience given to us, a set of divine laws given to, to every free willed person by God. So interesting that he knew our spiritual health is essential, right? And one could slightly alter the concept of individuation to conform to spiritism spiritism as a journey to improve the self in order to ascend to meet the divine right not far off and for that is our purpose on earth right Jung was fundamentally correct then he also discovered another important process to aid to our journey synchronicity and this concept holds let me bring up a picture of that and I'll talk about this more because I believe this is interesting. And, and I think that it, I would like everyone listening to think about how that pertains to you. Because I would think that most people had some sort of uh, event like that happening to them. So the concept is holds that events are meaningful coincidences. If they occur with no apparent casual, oh, hello, soul, casual relationship, yet seem to be meaningful meaningfully related. Synchronicity is what Jung says is the invisible hand of the spirit world as they move us from class to class to cover the subjects assigned to us. Now, let me talk to you about my synchronicity. And I think I've had some, but you, know, you never know, right? Because if you look at this diagram, you have casuality at one end, right? Which it means that, okay, let me explain that first is you know, you're looking for a job. You've told your family you need a job. Then out of the blue, you get Uncle Bob, who still communicates to your dad, and he's got a job offer. Well, you can't say that's synchronicity, right? Because people talk, and that could just be, you know, the forces coming in. And as you see, then you see synchronicity on the other side. And then space-time continuum, which is our whole, this universe, and indestructible energy, which I think really is is uh, Jung's, you know, uh, symbolism for for the spirit world right which is indestructible energy which is the divine so 
But let me tell you one of my stories. So when I when I had my wife and my two kids were at home, and we ha we we have a dog, you know, and the dog was called Nevi. And one day, uh, my wife and I left Nevi. We just left Nevi in the house. We went to the grocery store, and we came back, and the door to the garage, when the garage was open, right, was opened, and Nevi had gotten out. Well, it usually didn't worry me because Nevi was a smart dog, and he knew which side, you know, his his toast was buttered on. He always came back, or she always came back, I should say, because she ran around and everybody knew her. But when by the time the kids got home from school, she still wasn't there. Everybody got worried. So I we got in the car, right? Everyone's done this, and yelled, Nevi, Nevi. It didn't it couldn't find her at all. And that was very, very that's never happened before. And of course, that happened. That happened. She, you know, I had a, a dog tag on her, and then one day, like a week before, she somehow got in a brush or bush and got the thing ripped off her collar. And of course, I was too lazy to get a replacement. I just hadn't gotten around to it. I thought, well, she always comes back, and everybody knows her. So of course, I was incorrect. So everyone was really worried. We couldn't find her. It was dark. Then out of the blue, a friend of Lucas called and said, I think my mom has seen your dog. And, and I go, where? And, and so what the story was, what we heard is his, his friend's mom was looking for some reason at a veterinarian site. And as a vet, a farther vet, we hadn't been to that vet before. And they would host pictures of lost dogs. And she, and she goes to her son, hey, isn't that Nevi? And so her son called and called my my son and, we, and yes so we went over to the vet's office of course it was all closed it was too late at night but then we walked around we yelled navi and we heard her, we heard her bike her her bark and so uh, you know a week afterwards or the next day of course we we picked navi up but a week after i i saw her and i said well thank you so much for calling us she goes you know it was funny i never go to that site i don't know why but somehow I just went to that site and then I saw Nevi. And so one could say like, well, big deal. You found a lost dog, right? Who cares? And that could just be, you know, a happenstance. Well, yes, you are correct in all those comments. But to me, that, that little thing where our family was worried, the kids were worried, and then they got someone to tell us where Nevi was out of the blue who never looks at those sites. That, to me, is the definition of synchronicity. And I also think those small examples are actually more, sometimes more powerful than the big examples of how the spirit world affects our lives, right? If you read the books of Andre Louise, there's, just, there's so many like little things they will do that you think are not important are important in the long run, are important to your mental health. It's just amazing. So that's my story of synchronicity. Now, so let's go through what uh, one an example from his book, Synchronicity, by Carl Jung, which is another interesting story here. So here is, oh, here is his, okay, let me start. Okay, it's sharing, okay. So, synchronicity. So his, in his, in the book, Synchronicity, Jung tells the following story. So this is, I'll read this for you. For those, because we'll put, I'll also let everybody know, we now go, besides these, I put, uh, my live stream on Kardec Radio Facebook site. I also put that on my YouTube and video channel. I will also do a on Spotify and other podcasts. I will load the the, uh, the podcast onto Spotify so you can get to that. You can go to my site, nwspiritism.com. It's right under the picture, close under the picture of Alan Kardec. So here's what Carl Jung said about synchronicity. 
My example concerns a young patient who, in spite of efforts made on both sides, proved to be psychologically inaccessible. The difficulty lay in the fact that she always knew better about everything. Her excellent education had provided her with a weapon ideally suited to this purpose, namely a highly polished Cartesian rationalism with an impeccably geometrical idea of reality. Oh, yeah, I've been there. After several fruitless attempts to sweeten her rationalism with a somewhat more human understanding, I had to confine myself to the hope that something unexpected and irrational would turn up, something that would burst the intellectual retort into which she had sealed herself. Well, I was sitting opposite her one day with my back to the window, listening to her flow of rhetoric. She had an impressive dream the night before in which someone had given her a golden scarab, a costly piece of jewelry. While she was telling me this dream, I heard something behind me gently tapping on the window. I turned around and saw it was a fairly large flying insect that was knocking against the window pane from outside in the obvious effort to get into the dark room. This seemed very strange to me. I opened the window immediately and caught the insect in the air as it flew in. It was a, a scarabite beetle or a common rose chafer whose golden green color most nearly re resembles that of the golden scarab. I handed the beetle to my patient with the words, here is your scarab. This experience punctured the desired hole in her rationalism and broke the ice of her intellectual resistance. The treatment could now be continued with satisfactory results. So, isn't that an interesting, you know, uh, little, uh, uh, no, another little story. So, this is what, this is what that uh, we hear that's so important, these little things. And I'll, I'll bet people listening to this YouTube uh, video or, that you, or you know, here on Facebook streaming, I think everyone out there has had their own little story of things that just happen. And those things that just happen are, are like, they're, they're kind of like the sheep being herded by the sheepdogs, right? Sometimes they don't even know that there's barking on the side or here. They just kind of go in the direction. They don't know why they're going in that direction, but somehow they just feel they should go in that direction. That's because of the of the dog going all around them and 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 pointing them in the right, you know, into the right path as to their blueprint. And I think that's what happens to us more than we realize, right? The college you went into, the the partner that you married that you met, like. Who knows, right? Like I met my wife in uh, Rio de Janeiro. You know, here we were born in two different continents and somehow uh, we met. Oh, let's see what Glockia says. Yes, she says, thank you for sharing about your pet experience. The spiritual world acts very dramatically, doesn't it? Great example using our ordinary lives. And then Liana says, spirit intervention is like 90% of our lives. And yeah, I have to, so, just for people here, some spirits say that nothing happens by chance. And I don't think that's true. I think there's some things, and I've seen, you know, NDE where even spirits said, well, this kind of happened to you, and that wasn't meant to happen. So I, and I agree, is, is I think more things that people realize, just like Liana says, is we're structured. There is a very interesting uh, spirits meeting that was recorded in Alan Kardec's uh, uh, magazine. And it was in one, I forgot what year it was. It was this uh, psychological review of 1850 something. I can't remember. But anyway, the spirits meeting, what they did is they, they called the spirit Diogenes. And of course, Diogenes was the famous person who went through the city of Athens with a light, you know, lamp saying, looking for the only honest man in Athens and he, and so they, they talked to him and, and he says, I go, well, Dodge. And they asked him about Alexander and he said, well, you know, what was recorded, that was very little. He was really an arrogant young man. And it was funny because it was just the, the personality of Dodge. And he was like, it was like this grumpy old guy, but he knew everything. Right. And all of us have known people like that. And he goes, and he finally says, well, you know, you on earth, you're just slaves. And I thought, you know, he didn't really expound on that, but I, I thought of that. And I think 
what he is saying. And he, he says that like a graduate student talks to a freshman in the university, like, uh, you don't know what you're doing. This is all, you know, you're just being, you know, doing the easy stuff. What he's saying is that as we are immature spirits, we have this blueprint and we are, and we are told to follow this and we follow this blueprint and really our free will. It's very interesting. You read Ellen Kardec's books. I mean, I'm sorry, Andre Luis's books and other books by G. G. Vaughan and so forth. And they really try to argue, that, oh yeah, you've got free will, but the argument isn't that great. So yes, but no, the argument is true. We have free will, but it's not as I think a lot of us think it is. Free will is, is my belief, and anyone can um, disagree with me, is mainly our attitude and how we learn through our trials. Our trials are going to happen to us. Now, they could be because of wrong deeds in the past, or they could be because we need to be um, broaden our horizons and learn, you know, more subjects. But what I think what the spirit Dajni was saying is that as you go higher and higher, you know, from a, a uh, world of atonement, a plan of atonement like we are now, to a plan of regeneration, to a happy world, etc., once you are in a physical, uh, you're a physical being again, you will actually have a, on the higher and higher planet, you'll have more and more actual free will to say, oh, no, I want to be a scientist this time, or I want to, you know, do this this time, instead of you being directed with a, a curriculum, right? Because there's a difference between elementary school and like junior high or, or middle school, as they call it. You know, these are the class you're taking. Don't, don't even ask to take other classes versus college where what classes do you want to take right i think that is a big difference so let's get back to carl jung now so then what's interesting what's interesting is this is that carl jung also had an nde near-death experience and I think that provided and I think of course now what I call in my shorthand for NDE experiences is people have had an NDE experience and it's always very uh, you know sometimes it's frightening to people if they go the wrong direction but it's it's it, it affects them a lot it's they're they're changed spiritually for, you know for the rest of their lives but if you want to look at it from you know, a spiritist point of view, an NDE really is being taken out of class by the vice principal and said, mm, I think you have something to learn here. And they talk to you about it and they send you back. So to me, an NDE is really a gift from the spirit world to get you back on the right track. But let's talk about Jung's NDE. So what happened as, as Carl Jung he, he, he hung on the edge of death, right? He, he thought he was dying and he saw himself then high up in space from which perspective he could see the blue globe of earth in the subcontinent of India. As he floated in space, he noticed a very large granite block also floating in space, which held a temple. Young approached the steps leading to the temple and then experienced a strange thing. as in quotes. This is what he said. I had the feeling that everything was being slowed away everything i aimed at or wished for or thought the whole phantasmagoria of earthly existence fell away or was stripped from me an extremely painful process nevertheless something remained it was as if i now carried along with me everything i had ever experienced or done everything that had happened around me i might also say it was me and i was it i consisted of all that so to speak I consisted of my own history, and I felt with great certainty, this is what I am. Now, this corresponds with other NDEs, and it perfectly corresponds with the concept of the spirit, the paraspirit, and the human body in spiritism. The spirit is you. The spirit is your personality. And it's, it, they talk. They use the word personality in books by Reverend Jeeval Owen, by Chico Xavier, uh, uh, Yvonne Piera, and that is basically our our set, our character, right? Our character, our intellect in the spirit world, and that's why he he said 
everything was stripped from him. And what I th believe what he meant by that is his earthliness, his humanness. He, he is is feeling connected to to the earth as a as a regular person, and he be, and he actually came into his spirit person, which he knew he was on a much greater plane, right? And of course, then he had everything he ever experienced that had happened around me. So what does he mean by happened around me? And NDEs over and over again were, were said that when people have an NDE and they go through some NDEs, they go through this period where, oh, that's where they, where they say, okay, let's look at some of your experiences. And they, and they play back what not only the person having the NDE was thinking, but the people around them were thinking. Again, this is what I'm interpreting from Jung, Jung's writing of his NDE. So I'll let me go on. He said, this experience gave me a feeling of extreme poverty, but at the same time of great fullness. There was no longer anything I wanted or desired. Don't get that, right? I existed in an objective form. So again, that is the spirit, right? He's not tied to materialism, right? Because wanted or desired is mostly, uh, you know, our, our human form. I was what I had been and lived. At first, the sense of annihilation predominated or having been stripped or pillaged, but suddenly that became of no consequence. Everything seemed to be past. There was no longer any regret that something had dropped away or been taken away. On the contrary, I had everything that I was and that was everything. Again, goes along with other NDE people have said, and it goes along with spiritism. Is. What have we been told over and over again by every wonderful spiritist medium? The only and you know, and the and the messages that are psychographed to these mediums by the spirit world. What are you taking back with you after after you lose your physical body? This, this, nothing, right? And that's what he had. He, you know, he'd been stripped or pillaged, as he said, of everything except himself. And he said, well, that there was no consequence, right? Like, who needed that? Right? That's 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 the power, that's the wonderfulness of being in the spirit world, right? That is just uh he, you know, he's parroting what has been told to us from spiritism to other NDEs. Let me continue. As I approached the temple, I had the certainty that I was about to enter an illuminated room and would meet there all those people to whom I belong in reality. There, I would at least understand what historical nexus I or my life fitted into. I would know why I had come into being and where my life was flowing. There's this great um, other NDE by J James, and he said as he, he was out of his body and this woman met him, took him by the hand, took him by the hand and led him to a forest. Yes, and the soul says we're definitely not alone. <laughs> exactly. Led him to a forest. And he, there was like 11 people around this big table. And he, he didn't recognize anyone like by name, but he felt he knew them, right? So he was probably still within the spirit and the human, in the human brain. And then they, 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 they brought up what he had done. And they talk about, okay, this is why you were on earth. This is what you need to learn. This is what we think you have learned. What do you think you have learned? Do you think you need to go back? And James wrote that, yeah, he agreed with them. He wasn't done yet. He had to redouble his efforts at being more spiritual, learning what he was originally signed up, you know, the spiritual contract to learn on earth. And they made the decision, thus, let's send you back. Again, he, Jung felt this. He said, okay, he felt like he was going to be known why he was there. So, I'll continue. From below, from the direction of Europe, an image floated up. It was my doctor. As he stood before me, a mute exchange of thought took place between us. Dr. H had been delegated by the earth to deliver a message to me, to tell me that there was a protest against my going away. I had no right to leave the earth and must return. The moment I heard that, my vision ceased. So, Jung took three weeks to recover from his heart attack. And, of course, in those times, 
they didn't have the open heart surgery, the stents or, or the beta blockers, all that stuff. So I'm sure that was not uh, easy on him. And during this time, as he slept, he had visions of an afterlife. And as he regained, regained his strength, his visions faded away. His experience was important to Jung because years later, he could look back and declare these visions were the most tremendous, I'll quote, were the most tremendous things I've ever experienced, not a product of imagination. The visions and experiences were utterly real. There was nothing subjective about them. They all, all had a quality of absolute objectivity. So is what he was saying is they didn't, he didn't believe for a second. They came from his own mind. They came from, a, when he said objectivity, he meant they came from somebody else. Uh, and I just forgot the person's name. There's a very famous neurosurgeon that wrote a book, Dr. Eber something, who wrote a great book about, you know, he was a neurosurgeon, didn't believe in God, believe NDEs, were, ah, it's just in your brain going away or some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of, chemical in your brain doing this. He had an NDE. And then he wrote this book saying the visions he saw. And he went through all of the arguments of what they think an NDE was as far as not from the spiritual world. And he said, no. He goes, my experience is there's no way I had anything in my mind for me to come up with that, right? And it wasn't this, it wasn't that. He just went, each one of them said, no, it could not have been, right? Because my experience was so different. I had nothing relatable to what what. I did when I was in the spirit world. Of course, that's another aspect of synchronicity. I'm sure the spirit world used him, knew that he was someone that didn't believe in anything above himself, which of course many people do. I don't blame them. I did too. Well, I always believe in God, but far away God. And they used him and said, okay, now we're going to give you NDE. You know, let's, you're right about that. That's synchronicity right there. That's that's saying, okay, this is going to happen to you. This is going to change your world. So, again, I think the spirit world allowed Young a closer look into the other side. Like others before him, he felt what it was like to be mentally connected into a vast array, right? Because the spirit world, I believe the more and more I read about these things, is the spirit world is just is this vast amount of vibrations and data. And as we go higher and higher in the spirit, we're able more to, to connect and read into the different information about us. And that's like, you know, volatation, right? When they, we, you know, like in No Solar, where they go from uh, No Solar to Earth you know, at the speed of thought. You know, that is using your thoughts to go through and change the environment around you, right? You're changing the data points around you into whatever environment that you want it to. And that's why, you know, uh, again, if you, you read my book, uh, Heaven and Below, talking about how spirits are trained, just like Reverend Eva Owen's mother said, yeah, when she was talking to her son, right, she was a spirit, how the, they were training themselves to use their mind to create things. And they had, they you know, they tried to get around and create an elephant. Of course, a group of them, they were laughing because they didn't do it very well, but they were being trained how to use their minds to change the universal fluid into what they thought, right? Because thought is action in the spirit world. So, and then when you know that, right, for, you know, that thoughts are actionable and permeate throughout the entire universe, right? And as, you know, the spirit of Manuel said, that, you know, thoughts are all unique IDs and they go everywhere. So, Imagine, you know, I can intellectually think that, but imagine being taken away from our solitary cocoon and suddenly plugged into a dimension where information swirls about you. Of course, you would feel the complete smallness of his existence in comparison to the immensity of the spirituality. Jung talks of the past, which is probably his discovery that he can recollect in the minutest detail the sights, sounds, feelings of any moment in his life our previous lives. Just as he was ready for full discovery, he was pulled back. Again, that's typical spirit world. They're not going to give you the answer. They're going to give you hints. They're going to give you the path to the answer, just like any good teacher. They're not going to tell you, you know, well, question five, that's, you know, answer A. No, they're going to say, well, I, you know, try this. 
The spirit world knew that if he was allowed to fully explore the universe beyond, he would not want to return. And instead of going on to write his greatest works, he may not have possessed the motivation to recover and produce. So this is why it's so important and so interesting to look at uh, Carl Jung. If we go through. Oh, uh, Sylvia, hello and blessings. Well, thank you, Sylvia. Get that comment. So this is this is why Jung knew that past lives, he felt it, and then he saw he it was, you know, not scientifically proven, right? Because it was just happening to him, he could not use that in the court of law, but it was shown to him, yes, past lives affect us. Jung understood. I'll bet imperfectly that our past lives influences our present. He didn't really ever talk about karma, right? Which the, he'd missed, but he did understand that the spirit world was trying to put us in the right direction. Also, unlike Freud, who couldn't see beyond one existence on earth, Jung made the leap to understand that we are on earth for a reason and we are guided through a series of seemingly unrelated events so that we may journey to, to return to the spirit realm. And not just to return as we were before, which spiritism calls parking, which I know I'm sure I have done, I'm sure all of us have done, which parking is you go life after life and you don't really, you don't really uh, improve, right? You go one life and, and you're, the still, you're still the same yeah, maybe not so good, not so bad person, but you're not spiritually, you know, you didn't get any maturity. You're still selfish. You're still run by pride, you know, which I, still, of course, still am. Uh, hopefully a less degree than I was. Hopefully I made a little bit of progress this life. But, but that's why, you know, these events, and when you talk about synchronicity, right, these seemingly unrelated events to improve ourselves. And, and that is really... And if you add that with karma, which he didn't really have, but what karma is, so Jung knew that there was some sort of curriculum, but once we understand spiritism, we understand that karma creates the curriculum, right? What we do in this life is creating the curriculum we need in the next life. And let's say if you park yourself for life after life, well, each time the spirit world will try something else to try to make that dramatic events to change your attitude, right? Okay, well, that didn't work, right? He was on the ship attacked by pirates and he was had to walk the plank. That didn't make him a nicer person. Let's try something else, right? They will do that. They will try one thing after another and they will be very smart about it. Of course, why are we on earth? Because we're slow learners and we are stubborn, right? We like our pleasures and we like to feel worse that we are important. And therefore, you know, we don't learn that fast, at least me. I'm hoping a lot of people out there are a lot smarter than me. So therefore, we can't escape the supposition that our actions in the past affect our life in the present. Even Carl Jung saw that. Who never? I don't know if he ever heard of spiritism. <clears throat> what we experience, our feelings, our thoughts, are composed of invisible lines tracking back centuries that pushes and pulls us in directions that we are not consciously aware of. We, some, and somewhat, we can look at ourselves as marionettes controlled remotely according to a manuscript written by a collective intelligence far beyond our comprehension. Think about the NDEs. When, when, uh, when these people are at the table and then they're showing these, you know, 4D movies of their life and what other people are thinking. Just think, and these are, you read this over and over again on NDEs. Think of the computing power it takes to take the information from a person. You know, let's say it's September, you know, 14th in 1492. We're going to see what you did and we'll see what all around you did. And they can get that and create that image all around them and actually feel like they're living in that image within you know, microseconds, picoseconds. Think of the power of the spiral. Think, think how that's beyond our imagination, right? It just like makes our greatest computer nothing, right? Absolutely nothing. 
and of course, in reading uh, about communication between spirits, and I go over this in my book, Spirits in the Spirit uh, Universe, talking about what are the powers of spirits. When com spirits communicate, they say there's different levels of communication. There's one, there's thought to thought. Of course, there's voice. They can use voice. And then there's they can send pictures into your mind. Oh, Danya, hi. Now, and they can send pictures in your mind, right? And sometimes they'll say that if you're going from one level to another level, they'll they'll send you a, a message, a thought message and pictures to make sure that there's no, um, uh, that everything is correct, right? There's no misunderstanding. But then they talk about another communication. They said, yeah, and this type of communication is used mainly by higher spirits. And, it goes, and, they, and they told Reverend v, G. Vao, and of course, this was in the early 1900s, it goes, it's hard for us to talk about that, but it's kind of taking all, all the information, of, you know, it's in the spirit universe somehow, and it's pulling all the information about a person. And it was, you know, it was, but really, if is the way the explanation was, was, was written, it was like, okay, when you're in the 21st century, right? with cell phones and data and universal cloud, you understand exactly what they're talking about. What they're saying is that since all of our thoughts, everything that's ever happened to us in life after life after life is all recorded, any high spirit can say, okay, let me see, okay, Brian, what did he do from April 1st to April 30th in 2017? Okay, yeah, then we can decide what to do. Or we can go tap into his thoughts as they're coming in now and go right back to him, right? This is the power of the spirit world. I mean, it's, this is, this is why, you know, hopefully this is why spiritism is so interesting. And in what I do, there are so many good people, especially in Brazil and in Portuguese talking about spiritism and how we should uh, uh, remake ourselves into a more loving, kind person. And, and those people are so good. And what, and, I, and I'm not that good at that, although I've written a book, How to Live Inner Peace with Spiritism, which I hope actually gives you kind of a blueprint how to become a better kind of person. But the other thing I really like to do is try to explain about the spirit world, because I believe the more you understand how everything works, right, what your part is in it, it can either make you a bit scared, like, holy, what, right? I mean, watch everything I do. But if you, when you get beyond that and you see just this world, which is beyond, is greater, you have greater power and greater range and you're immortal than any science fiction or fantasy book out there where you create by your mind. If you can read about the spirit world and understand that, if that is not a way to self-motivate yourself to, to do the heavy sacrificing right and what i mean sacrificing is take the time out to help people you know don't maybe not um maybe not take that job that where you, you know, where i've done in the past where i had to be an executive that's why i decided i didn't want to be a, a higher level executive because i had to conform to the corporation and when you conform to the corporation anybody out there who's done this knows when they say things like oh fire 10 percent of the people i go well 10 percent of my people they're they do go okay. There's things I need for that level. No, no, fire them. We want to in incentivize the rest of the workforce. Like that type of stuff is just morally wrong. So, you know, can you sacrifice yourself or, or you know, or help the people that you can any way you can, right? Then also study, take time out, you know, maybe not play so much golf, take time out, study about spiritism. Start, start changing, start altering your your thought processes, your synapses, and, and get yourself so you think lovingly and you don't see someone and say, oh, that person, oh, I hate that person because of the way they dress, whatever. Say, like, okay, that person, that person, maybe they're acting strange and you just say, oh, they're an immature spirit. They'll learn, maybe not this life, but their next life. The main thing is we all, our free will, we all have the free will to analyze, right, where we're at, right? It's like we're, we are brought into this play. We're in the middle of this theater, this live theater. We can analyze the theater, the acts and the subtext of each scene. 
And the better we comprehend the underlying meaning of the script, the more we shall, we, the more we shall excel in our life's performance. This is so important to understand. And it's also important to understand for your level of forgiveness that those around you that have, that give you a hard time, right? They're, you have to, sometimes they're there for a purpose that you needed that hard time and you just have to look at them as okay well they're actor b on this you know scene three on act two and they're there to step up my game and they're just being used right they're not they're not attacking me because of who i am they're they're giving you a lesson right when i'll give you an example from my own examples when i was working at a company and we had this person that was just oh and I'm sure other people have seen people like that. Where, you know, I was running projects and and they would come and they would just say, no, this is wrong, you know. And they were just so mean about it, right? But unfortunately, they were correct, right? They were just, instead of saying it nicely, they said it directly. And oh, I hated that person. But finally, I said, okay. I went to my boss and I complained. He goes, well, sorry, you're going to have to learn to live with it. What's, you know, that was the best thing that happened to me. Finally, what I did, I said, okay, set that person down. I said, okay, look, because that person would give me so many things wrong. I could, you know, I just like forget them all, right? And because my emotion got in the way of me being competent. And so, okay, I'm going to write down each one of these and I'm going to tell you what we did for them. And then I'm, we're going to meet like twice a week. And we're going to go through each one. And then from that person on up, they still had that, ad they still had that character of how, you know how they talk to you but it didn't it, but i could tell that i was just that person right and it worked out really well and it actually made what we were doing much better now i could have hated that person and could have thought to destroy them politically right instead i used that person to grow uh i'm not saying anything great about myself because that's probably one of the few times i did something smart right there are other times that i was really stupid but at least i have one example and that's what we need to do. And that's why I want to show everyone, right? And, and to, to bring people what the power is of the spirit world. And to show you that, you know, Carl Jung understood it too from his own perspective. Again, here is synchronicity. When things happen that had no, there was somehow the, that, you know, there was no, you know, casual effect, right? And it was just completely random, but not random because it affected you in a positive manner. Sometimes you can affect you in a negative manner that was meant to be, but you probably wouldn't recognize it as synchronicity. That is the spirit world affecting us. That is the spirit world saying, oh, time to go. Yeah, it's time for you to change that direction. Let me give you one more example that you read about. You always, when you hear about an uh, airline going down or a train wreck or something like that, isn't there always the case of one or two people that said, you know, I, I, I booked that flight and either my alarm didn't go off or my car, uh, you know, my car wouldn't start or I got stuck behind a wreck and I didn't make the flight and I lived. Now, I submit to you, that the vast majority of those times, I'm sure there's times it's just random events, is synchronicity. In fact, I remember a lecture, and I think it was by uh, Geraldinho, and he was uh, talking about the books by Andre Luis. And in one of the books, they were they were going to talk about how people are selected to uh, perish in airline crashes, and they decided, no, the world's not ready for that. We're not gonna we're not gonna cover that. So first of all. You know, even there was a, a building on fire in Brazil and Chico said, yeah, all those people that died in that building fire, they were actually in the crusade. They attacked the town. They killed people. And then, of course, they got what karma did. They, in turn, were burned in the building. There's always reasons why people are on that aircraft at that particular time. Therefore, synchronicity takes those people who said, no, OK, yeah, Let's not, that person's, yeah, he's the odd man out, but he's not supposed to perish in that craft, in that aircraft, so we will stop him from going there. 
that is how the spirit world affects our lives. Now, I know to many people that is like, you are, what are you smoking? Now, all I can say is the reason I, I delved into, into spiritism is because I had found out that my life was predetermined. My wife had an NDE, and she would tell me things as we were married. She had an NDE like 15 years before we were married. And, of course, I was like, eh, whatever, you know, of course, typical, you know, husband, right? Doesn't listen. Until things she told me that were going to happen happened with such specificity as to be, it could be probable, you know, it could be possible, but not probable, I think is, is the better word for that. It's just like, there's no way. How did she know that the bank I was going to work for almost a year before it went broke, when, you know, this was the whole 2000, what I think, six great recession, that the whole economy was just going to blow up, that the bank I was going to work for would go bankrupt. I was going to be let go, but I would be hired back by the same bank, but with a different name. I mean, that that's specific. There was other things too. And finally, when I saw when I saw the whole, uh, you know, when I went through and I wrote down everything, it goes, oh my God, this means that I'm not an independent, you know, I'm not an independent person. I didn't make my own decisions. Well, yeah, I, I did some, but it meant that there was some guiding hand. There was something that was guiding my life, right? All the way from when I went to UC Irvine in computer science, uh, you know, I flew to Rio, met my wife, right? All these things were me being herded in a certain direction. In fact, when I was growing up, I always was fascinated by Brazil. By, so I always wanted to go there, never got the time or anything until it was the right time, right? So that is why I believe. And then, of course, I looked at everything, and I finally found the Spirits book on PDF, you know, so I, of course I want to make sure everybody knows you can get the, the spirits book on PDF. Let me bring that up again. It's right here. Look up Alan Kardec uh, and just put space PDF and you'll get a whole list of, of books by Alan Kardec on PDF. You can get a lot of great things. If you look up spiritist books on PDFs, you can get that. So now, so I'd like to recommend everybody. So if you can, Please remember to share, right? Share this video. Uh, go to my YouTube or BitChute channel. A lot of what we're talking about here is covered in my books, Heaven and Below, Spirit and Spirit Universe, and how we are guided by spirits. And I would recommend reading them in order, although I've had some people read the second one first and whatever, they can go in any order you want. But it's all talking about the spirit world. It's talking about how things are really done. What is what is waiting for us out there? Let me bring up my second book. Oop, don't have it here. Okay. So I would recommend that. And then the other one, if you're interested, oh, and here's my book. How to Ascend, right? It's how to live inner peace with spiritism. And I take this from a message from Andre Luis de Chico Xavier of the steps you need to do in order to really ascend and, and get yourself prepared for spirit life. It's, I think it's very interesting. It should be very good for people to go. Oh, here's a message. Here's some glossia. In fact, let me show that to people. He goes, I understand your perspective. We can always find room for self-improvement and being true to ourselves without hurting others. I try to do that daily at my job. Not easy, and I think I'm failing on my actions then I, then I use this beautiful source. Oh, and then that's right. And some others to elevate myself. Yes. And believe me, you know, all of us understand. And that's a great message, Glacia. Look, when you're at work, life is it's just it's not black and white. And you've got to go with the flow at corporations to survive. And you can't be a completely what you conscious as a completely morally perfect person. Which That's okay, right? The spirit world understands that. You just do the best you can. I've worked for like really terrible organizations. I put up with it until I could find a job. Some of them, you know, like what I worked last time, I found a place for me where I could survive the best I could. 
of making money for my family and not being a burden on others. And yet, that, and we're all do that. Anyone who's been in any type of corporation understands it's a constant uh, juggling act, in, you know, for your conscience. So, you know, I, I commend you, and that's all you can do, right? All you can do is is, is to learn that. So, to end, I would like to go again and to say, if you want to speak to me or uh, Sergio or other people, you can go to spiritismstudy.org. You can get an appointment with uh, me or Sergio. You depend what you want, and we'll talk about spiritism with you. I, if you, what will happen is you'll go on this website. You'll kind of um, scroll down a little bit, and you hit. It will go to take where you can make an appointment. You fill out a little bit of form. You know how to. You know, your email will be sent to me, and what I'll, I'll never use that to put you on any list or anything. I will send you an email back saying I can reach you by WhatsApp or Skype, and at this particular time depending on what your time zone is right i'll try to conform to your time zone and then we'll just talk i won't tell you have to do anything you can just tell me what you believe or not believe ask questions so i i just really have enjoyed uh having people do this so if you'd like to speak me to me directly i would love to talk to you uh, go to spiritismstudy.org so i want to leave this here and uh, I want to thank everyone for your wonderful comments. And oh, yeah, thank you, Glock. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's not easy being a modern office worker or any type of worker now. And um, the spirit world knows that, and the spirit world understands that as we try to do the best we can, and that's all we can do. And I just want to congratulate everybody out there for you know being a good parent, being a good person, and and doing the best that you can. So I and I just can't tell you enough. Please read about spiritism, study it, try to live the doctrine if you possibly can. And but don't be too hard on yourself, right? Remember, we have plenty of lives to go. And when we make mistakes, John the Daniels, the spirit John the Daniels just says, you make a mistake. It's just like an arrow out of the quiver. Analyze it, try and do better. Next time, don't beat yourself up over it. <clears throat> anyway, I want to say. God bless everyone and a good night to all of you. Good night.